Thanks for joining us on the NRT Now podcast, part of the largest Christian music site online, newreleasetoday.com. Sit back and relax as we chat with your favorite artists, introduce you to new artists, and more. Now here's your host, Jake. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 72. Just want to say thank you so much for being here. Just thank you so much for spending some time with us here. And Before we get into this conversation with Pat Barrett, I just want to say this conversation has smacked me in the face twice already just hit me square between the eyes man just talking about the power of presence and attention i just want to challenge everybody and myself included because i'm terrible about this sometimes to just be present and give attention where you're at whether it's a concert just take the moment to soak in the artistry that's there soak in the atmosphere just be present in the moment in the concert instead of worrying about trying to record it and saving it for later or if you're with family or friends or whatever that is, just be there, be present. And sometimes even with TV shows, I mean, I know that's probably not the best example, but how many of you are like me who were watching a TV show, but we're on our phone or computer or whatever? I mean, we're not even watching a movie with the people that were around. And like I said, this hit me twice already, and it's something that I totally need to work on and how I give my attention and giving the gift of presence. So, man, I just hope that you join in this challenge with me of just being more present and being more attentive. So that being said, I suppose that we should probably listen to this conversation at some point. So without further ado, here we go. So we're here with the one and only Pat Barrett and Pat, I find it hilarious that as I've talked with people, you know, Hey, I got a, this interview with Pat coming up here. They're like, who? And then all of a sudden I play build my life and they're like, Oh yes, yes. I understand. Now. <laughs> I love it. I mean, so you are one of the artists, you know, in the worship scene that we've all heard build my life. I think the counter on our church of how many times we played it broke a while ago because we've done it so much. But that, I mean, that's been one of the most iconic songs in worship over the last couple of years. So let's talk a little bit about Pat and the person who is behind Build My Life. So you were originally with House Fires, if I understand correctly, or not originally, but you were part of well, that group. Yeah. Yep. It's so funny, man. I feel like right now at age 36, I'm doing the same thing that I was doing when I was 14. I grew up in the church and I've always written, I mean, I've been writing songs for a really long time. It's such a wild thought that anyone, I mean, outside of myself has, has heard or has played at a church, a song that, that I've been a part of writing. So I just, number one, that, sorry, I broke the counter on your church, <laughs> built my life counter, but gosh, I have, uh, through the years, I've been a worship pastor at a church. I was for almost 10 years at, I've been in worship collectives and bands and so it's funny. I've done the same thing in, in kind of different <laughs> forms, you know, along the way, which is cool. You get to look back and especially like look at moments of your life and go like, wow, how amazing, like this was going on. And these, these were the songs that are written out of that. And yeah, when I think about songwriting, it's almost like I see a year attached to it. I'm like, Oh, build my life that year. when that was written. This was going on. So yeah, I, I still, along the journey it's looked different at different times but the one thing that stayed the same has always been songwriting and having music as a, as a way of like communing with god and having worship just be such a it's just a massive part of my life and i hear people like you my brother's been in worship since he's been a teenager you know and that whole thing and i think back to when i was like 14 and i'm just a year younger than you are so i mean we're kind of in the same era am i your elder yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. And I respect my elders. So <laughs> yeah, <respect your> elders. <laughs> no all jokes, <laughs> but I mean, I, it just blows my mind. Me at 14 would have never been able to write worship songs to you know really even be a part. I mean, I may have even started tinkering with a guitar by that point, but that just blows my mind being a part of that at 14 years old. 
Well, I'll tell you this. If I listen back to my songs when I was 14, I will cringe. However, in the moment, this is what I love about it. For a 14-year-old now who is, I'm imagining that kid in the youth group playing songs, like everything's like televised now. Like it's being streamed and recorded. And I think at 14, I had the benefit of growing up in front of people and maturing along the way and it was never like immortalized on the internet in the process which i'm really grateful for you know yeah for those of you who are listening who are younger than us i don't think we even had cell phones it was like a bag phone when when we were that age my first cell phone do you remember what yours was mine was the nokia like brick (laughs) mine was an lg it was one of the oval long oval ones it wasn't the indestructible nokia (laughs) I remember the first time I saw an iPhone, I I called a buddy of mine and went, bro, the future is here. (laughs) Was my exact words. See, Uh, I was an iPhone hater, to be honest. Like, I had a Palm Trio when it came out. We had a few of those, the Windows Mobile. You know, I really loved those phones. The iPhone came out, and I'm like, this sucks. It's expensive. Are you serious? (laughs) Bro, when I held the iPhone for the first time, I was like, I'm I'm holding alien technology. (laughs) Steve Jobs found a wormhole to some other galaxy and he brought back the future well and i grew up in the middle of wyoming so when the iphone came out it was only on at&t as well okay got so it, got it was kind of like it. from a distance <laughs> but i mean i'm still more of an android guy but i have all apple iphone ipad mac somehow i like i got corrupted somewhere in the process yeah i like that i like that but yeah i mean it was it was mind-boggling and i look back we took a picture of, actually, it was from the Jeremy Camp episode we did on the podcast here. And I think about it, looking at just some of the technology from, that was like 2007. And I can't remember if we took that on a phone or what it was, but just the grainy pictures that came from the cell phone. Like, well, when color screens came out, it was like, let's not even talk about cameras. <laughs> let's talk about yeah, color exactly. screens on the cell phone. I know. Well, okay. And this is one of the things for me, just thinking as like a creative person, like going through life. The part about advancing technology that actually like saddens me a little bit is it yanks people out of being in the moment, present to it. Like actually like being yes. here instead of like trying to capture the moment, just like being in it, which those are two different things, trying to capture a moment and trying to actually just sit and enjoy it. There's this quote. Did you ever watch The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? I don't think I've seen that ben one. Stiller. There's a scene in it where Sean Penn's character is like, he's a photographer. There's a really rare like snow leopard that he's been hiding in like the Himalayan mountains or something to try to find. And he's behind his camera. The Whatever cat it is comes out and he sees it and he doesn't take the picture. Oh no. He just, but he does it on purpose. He just watches it. That scene in that movie, it was, I can't even tell you how powerful it's been in my life to like, so something amazing is happening, fighting the instinct to like capture it instead of just like, but what if you just like watched it? If you just yeah. sat and like enjoyed it instead of feeling the need to like record it, which is hard to do. So we didn't have the option back then, but I find now like it's almost like uh, as connected as it's made all of us, it, it is like the number one like chief enemy of being present. Oh, a hundred percent. It's something that I'm having to teach my daughter. She's 10 and can't remember what concert we're at, but she had her little point and shoot camera and she was just sitting there recording, recording for a few minutes. And I'm like, all right, kid, here's what we do. Like capture a brief little snippet of it. Cause you know, yeah, it's cool and all that. And mind you, the sound quality on this camera isn't, is trash too. So let's, let's not even go to the technical <laughs> side of that. But it's like, you know, take your snippet, and then put it down and just be here, listen, be a part of what this concert is. I can't imagine as you being a worship leader from the front of the stage, instead of seeing faces half the time, just seeing the back of a cell phone, like, oh, oh. yeah, there's an iPhone 6, there's an iPhone 11. Ooh, you spent, right. you spent for the pro, bro. <laughs> like, go. Right, right. You know what's done, like, for me, even in my own, like, faith and walking with God, like, a lot of the metaphors about the presence of God – so that phrase, I can look back to songs I've written that were always like, they were had like the come and fill this place type of metaphor. God, would you, 
show up and in your presence, would you do this and this and this? And I completely still resonate and understand that, obviously. But there are also other metaphors where through scripture, where God is here, but we're the ones who aren't present and awake, yep. which seemed to be in the gospels. That was like the story of Jesus. Like God is among us and we didn't recognize him. Who really has like the presence problem? Like, is God not present or are we not present? And I don't know. There's like, for me, like singing about some of that stuff, like waking up to God. There's a song on my new album that I wrote with Mac Brock and Daniel Bashta and my buddy Ben Smith. It's called Morning by Morning. And the pre-chorus is so simple, but it uses the word awake in it. Yeah. The song is just about like waking up in the morning and finding God there. That has been so powerful. And to me, it's always like, it's the constant reminder when like, when you're here, but you're not here, you're in the room, but your yeah. mind is in the future or whatever. Like that's always been a challenge for us as a family. It's a challenge to make sure that it, we're not together without being together. We're not sitting next to each other and just absent-minded. So like, even when Meg and I go on date nights and stuff, we'll leave, uh, leave the phone at home. We have the Apple watch in case yeah. someone needs to call and get a hold of us. But <laughs> we're not just like sitting at a table together, scrolling through Facebook or Instagram the whole time. We're actually like, with each other. It's so funny. It's made into so many songs and ideas, but for spirituality, gosh, it's such a blatant metaphor like are you here and awake to god in your own life or are you like somewhere else how many jokes are made sitcoms or just even around our families where we're all together but every single person's on their phone everybody's just hanging around scrolling facebook instagram or whatever that is i mean it's been a great connector i mean we're doing this on well you're on your phone i'm on an ipad right. yeah I mean, it's, it's great it's amazing great connector in 2020 and the, all the separation, we're still able to do this, but it's also been such the chief distractor. And let's be honest, if you're recording a video of a concert, how often do you actually go back and never. watch it again? You, you never do. <laughs> that is very profound, actually. How many videos, anyone who's wa- listening to this right now, I want you to go into your videos of your phone from every moment. You're like, I'm going to capture the sunset. It never looks as good. I don't know. I just, that is, that is actually very true. It's so funny. And as a tech guy as well, you work so well to craft the sound, make sure the room is full, everything's balanced. There's just something about that live, like the concert drum. Like there's just something about that that just has me in awe every time. And then you go back to it on your phone, you get, you know, it just never sounds the same as if you were there in the room. Totally. I mean, you know, it's weird too, not being able to be together. I think there's going to, for me, it's something to look forward to again. Like, I don't know when touring is fully going to open up, you know, or whatever, yeah. but I'm so looking forward to like being together again. I hope we can actually do that, be together and actually like, yeah. be there. Well, and after what we've all seen, I think there's just a hunger for that at this point in time. I mean, we've been separated. I mean, there's been so many mixed messages about everything over the last year. Can you even go see grandma? Can you even you know, go see your parents up the street or whatever? I mean, I think there's just this hunger for, can we actually really connect? Can we get together? Can we worship together? I really hope that, you know, once we do get through this, and I really think that we will just be able to get together and it'll be kind of a revival of that presence of corporate worship. You know, when we get to a concert, just being able to be there, I really think we'll see a revival with all of that. Just a renewed energy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And gosh, I resonate with that so much. And I think there is a, um, well, a couple things. One of the most profound things I think from my own life was realizing like how valuable my attention is to other companies and how much yep. money they shell into trying to grab my attention and pay yep. for my viewership on social media, advertisements, all that stuff. We don't realize how valuable our attention is. We give it away like we don't understand how, how rich it is. And we think this is like a, like a new conversation. We're like, no one in history has ever struggled with this. Like, it's actually like a very old conversation. So I, like, I grew up in the church, like my dad's a pastor. So I grew up around the scriptures. And it's so funny how many of these, like thinking back to like growing up, how many of these verses come full circle. These ancient perspectives speak directly to our modern dilemma. And one of them, like I'm thinking right now in the Psalms when David wrote, I set the Lord always before me. 
we can set a lot of things in front of our eyes. This is literally thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. There's a guy sitting with God saying, you know, it actually matters like what I put right in front of my face. Like that affects something in my soul. I don't know. Maybe that's what like, even in my family, why I still, as I'm walking out my discipleship with Jesus, it feels so relevant to me. I have not found another way that speaks to the holiness of the moment that we have right now and the opportunity we all have to like live in awareness to God in connection to God and also provide very like strong prophetic warnings and examples of what happens when we set other things before us and don't yeah. recognize like how beautiful our attention is when it's in the right place. I think that's a lot about what worship actually is. Yeah. Attention, what you're attentive to, where your heart is pointed and Gosh, like so many songs on the album were about that, directing attention to certain things. I called the album Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly, because sometimes we like focus on something, not realizing that all of it matters to God. Like, oh, we yeah. think God cares just about this sliver of my life and the quote unquote Sunday moments of my life. When really, no, God cares about all of it. Does he care about the way we act, the things we love and the way we walk? Of course he does. So that Micah 6, 8 verse is literally that whole chapter is, is asking the question, what does God care about? Does he care yeah. about it? What are the things that matter most to him? <laughs> and that is like the resolution passage there. So I'm thinking back 20 years of writing songs and things, especially over the last couple of years for this album that have spoken to me so much. It's like, wow, yeah, God has always cared about all of it. It's amazing when you can holistically present your life to God and say like, okay, here it is. Not just the songs I write, but where my eyes are guided and what I'm setting before me every day. And for this album, honestly, it's been, these have been the songs that like helped like set the Lord before me in the way I act and the things I love and, you know, in my growing and walking into the unknown and with faith in my life, like these have been the things that are like keeping my attention dialed in. So I don't get to, to the end of the day or the end of my life, you know, and say like, yeah. wow, I care about a lot of things that really don't matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so true. And we've been talking about the pandemic for about a year on this podcast, you know, and everywhere, because it, it's so strange. It, I know I've said this before, but it just blows my mind that everywhere across the planet, we're all in the same boat. I mean, we've had natural disasters and regionalized in certain areas, or we've had certain things happen in different parts of the world and all that. But Everyone in the planet right now, unless maybe Antarctica, they've been isolated and stuff. They might They're not. fine. Who Antarctica's knows? fine. Y'all, y'all have <laughs> no masks in Antarctica. You're good. <laughs> well, they do, but for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, we've we're all in this same kind of spot. It just completely blows my mind. I mean, we're really finding what is truly important. What have we truly cared about that has been missing and are we really that much worse off for it missing or not some things like family time it's really forced us to really dig down and ask a lot of these questions that we were too busy to ask ourselves seeing that i like to use the word busy right there i felt that in my own life being productive and being busy are not the same thing no i'm thinking about the story of just mary and martha yeah. it's like literally the perfect example yep. of now in our life where I remember someone say like, instead of sitting with Jesus and being present with him, Martha was busy making sandwiches that Jesus never ordered, yeah. <laughs> preparing stuff in the kitchen and doing all this stuff. Now I know what it feels like to be Martha where I'm like, I'm doing all this, all these things to try to serve you God. And, and, and I'm missing the one thing in that scripture is like, Oh, Martha was bummed that Mary was just sitting with Jesus, but Jesus said, she's got the one thing that actually like matters. Like Martha, Martha, you're worried about many things. And I think a lot of our worry and anxiety drives our busyness. Like who are we if, if we're not working and things aren't carrying on like the way we thought they would. Again, another yeah. unbelievable example of why <laughs> I'm a disciple of Jesus still where I'm like that passage yeah. speaks to fear and anxiety and busyness and productivity and our insatiable yep. lust 
for accomplishment or something, you know what I mean? Or to find meaning in our purpose <laughs> instead of meaning in being who we truly are, which is beloved by God. That's for me, like any song or piece of art or movie or conversation that helps me like get back to that place. Oh gosh, that's like priceless. <laughs> For me, like the worship side of it, some of the repetitive nature of the worship. Yeah, you know, I've always been not the biggest fan, if I'm honest, until like yeah, recently. Talk, talk till, to really? Well, like the joke that Chris Tomlin had to get a new Mac because his uh, Control C and Control V were too worn out as he was writing songs. That was like a Babylon oh B article at one point in time. <laughs> the Babylon B strikes again. <laughs> yeah. No one is safe. But I was in a moment of worship, I, I think Leland was leading it. And we just were there. We sang the same chorus, the same bridge for probably like 10 minutes straight. And it never got old just because we're in that presence. We're in that moment and we're in that moment of worship. And we were completely focused in that direction. I mean, just really letting that sink in and just being in the presence. It's not about the words. It's not about the lyrics. I mean, realistically, it's not even about the melody or anything like that. It's just about diving into that moment of being present with God in that moment of worship and allowing your heart to do that. Like that's what it like clicked. There's still some songs that are like, okay, let's, let's chill with the copy and paste here. So, okay. It's so funny you say that. I definitely feel the same thing. And at the same time, like, do you have kids? How many kids? Yeah, Three of them now. Three. Okay. I have three kids as well. They're in school right now. I'm watching the way that they learn is through repetition. There are times where like, you're saying the same thing again, and it's really mundane and there's a rolling of the eyes, you know, (laughs) the repetition helps you kind of get it in there. That's why I like liturgy and like saying the Lord's prayer, like the Lord's prayer hasn't changed in a long time, if you know what I mean. Or the Apostles Creed, you say the same thing to continually like get it like in your heart. You make it a habit of belief instead of like a one-off. There was a time where Meg and I and the kids, we lived by the beach for a few months. And I was like, okay, I never lived by the, by the water. I'm going to surf every day. And the first two weeks, I couldn't even paddle out to the surf break. It was so exhausting. I was not fit. It was like the type of like nausea that happens when your body's like, yeah. uh-uh, uh-uh, we're not paddling today. Then probably about four or six weeks in, a lot of like the things that were I had to focus so much on and repetition became second nature and it clicked use the word click which i think is amazing you do the thing that feels monotonous and like insignificant until it clicks and then you realize like wow maybe we keep singing the same songs about faith and the holiness of god and because it hasn't clicked for us yet there are times when i write songs i'm like am i writing like another song about how the faithfulness of god and then i open the scriptures and i'm like oh my gosh We've been singing about this forever. There's something about it that is so, um, it's a very old thing in the form of a new song. Anything in your life that deals with faith and trust and hope and forgiveness, those are old. Those are old ancient things. But when you embody them and you participate in them in your life, it becomes a new song again. Absolutely. I loved, I don't know why, just when you said like, oh yeah, I sang this over and over again. And then it like clicked and was like, wow, the moments where that happens and it lines up and like the lights come on, you know, in your, in your heart, gosh, in worship, I've had that experience so many times where I'm singing the same thing, but then the lights came on and I was like, oh, I get it now. Beautiful. I'll transition. You know, I know we're kind of winding down to the end of our time here, but we got to touch on a little bit on lightning. I feel like the song with Harold Mm. from the new album, which is, you know, a powerful song, but I was kind of scrolling through, who is this Harold dude? And kind of scrolling through his Instagram and something came out that he was saying in the moment. And I'm over paraphrasing. Wow. I'm over paraphrasing that. Apparently paraphrasing is a hard word. Yeah, (laughs) Um, it is. Words are hard. (laughs) So Harold, if you ever listen to this and like I butchered this, I'm sorry. But uh, (laughs) post that he put out is a lot of times we don't need to hear what we did wrong or what the solution is or anything. We need you to come beside us as we're hurting. We need people to come beside us. Yeah. And it just kind of like one of those clicking moments, like epiphany moments, like, we're talking about Jesus and in, in the Bible. It's like when he went up to like the woman in the well, he didn't come up and say, Hey, uh, that whole like six husband thing that 
that don't fly, but here, let me talk to you now. I mean, he talked to her first and then yeah. addressed what was going on. The people who are throwing stone, who are going to stone the scowl, let you who has no sin be the first one to throw the first stone. And then he turned around and said, go and sin no more. Kind of going back to the social media and, you know, the chief distractor, like, we're so quick to hit that comment button. We're so quick to say everything that's wrong and all that. Yeah. Like I said, when I saw that, it just like really clicked for me. It's like, man, what if we were slow to say what's wrong and what needs to happen? And, and it's not just a race conversation. It's not a, just a political conversation. It's just as you and me together. Yes, I do something stupid and it caused a whole bunch of pain. And the result of what's going on with me right now is my own fault. But I don't need that right now. I don't need to hear that right now. I need you to come beside and let's heal before we move forward. Yeah, I mean, time actually does not heal all wounds. No. Time is not a good thing if you if you have a broken bone that needs to be set and you don't set it first. And the setting of a broken bone can be painful, but you get it to the place it's supposed to be and then time is helpful. There's a proverb about it says I walk by the the house of a young of a sluggard or something like that. <laughs> like someone who like with their time they didn't take care of their property is what it was and now vines had grown up over the fence and destroyed the fence and the house was in shambles time was not kind intentionality and love with time is miraculously powerful it's why it's a deep spiritual thing to weep with those who weep and to mourn with those who mourn the words like compassion when it says in scriptures jesus was stirred in compassion he blank I remember hearing a definition of that, that the word means to suffer with. It wasn't just like, let me fix the problem and like, hurry up, let's move on. Like, no, let's sit in the reality of what is happening right now and feel all the things you feel and like God meet you in that place. Like let that happen. So lightning, lightning with Harold, that was, gosh, that was sitting in a lot of pain and inviting God into it and not pretending like it's, It's not as painful as it is and not pretending like you're doing better than you are. Like no pretending. There are absolutely time, like quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Like that's like one of the best pieces of advice you could ever give. Don't be reactionary. However, speak the truth. Sometimes our silence says something. That's what Dr. King said. When you don't say something when you're supposed to, that says something. Yeah. Gosh, that song, that song has such a specific time stamp on it when it was written and what was going on in the world and it's still going on in the world. It still feels really true. Gosh, it was such a song of pain and hope intermixed in together. It's one of my favorite songs in the album. I mean, just from a melodic standpoint, I mean, it's just so easy to listen to, just so easy to get in there. Man, played it a few times on repeat. It's just insane that way but yeah i said we're just talking about being present tying that back to the beginning part of our conversation you know what if we were more present than being on social media or just being so busy trying to fix or accomplish this goal or do whatever it is and just be present have conversation just be with you know and alongside instead of just trying to be right and do all the stuff just the presence with it all and like just how powerful could that be Oh yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's what I feel like with each other, be here awake in your own life as much as you can to your own like motives and what's going on in your heart. Like be here, be present, awake to to God in your life. Gosh, truly this album for me is like the the be here song. Be present to the way that you're acting. Be present to the things that you love in your heart. Be present to the way that you're growing and learning and in humility have a heart that can be still formed and molded and touched by God. I mean, I think the title of this episode has to be presents or something like that. Not Christmas presents, yeah. but <laughs> no, no, both, both. And. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh man. Well, I just appreciate you taking the time out, man. This has been a blast, man. Just the blast from the past with all the different phones. <laughs> like I have not yeah. thought about my first cell phone in years. <laughs> Glad what was life before you. that yeah oh yeah oh man well i just appreciate you spending the time with us here pat thanks so much for having me
Thanks for hanging out with us for this episode of the NRT Now podcast. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And special thanks to Neon Feather for providing our theme music. Make sure to check out newreleasetoday.com and our socials for more great content. See you next episode. Thank you.